money, family, or look. Very few people go to a psychic just for, just for a lark, just the heck of it, to see what the psychic is going to say. Most people are being bothered by someone. It's usually one of these things. So a psychic, by just making a few vague statements and reading body language, can quickly narrow down which of the things it is that the person is most concerned about and then focus on that. If you're going to be a psychic, remember this, do not ask questions. If you're supposed to know what people are thinking, and you ask questions, and then the psychic knows you, you, uh, you don't know what you're, you know, you don't know what you're asking. So, you don't say, are you planning to take a trip soon? You say, I see that you're planning to take a trip soon. And then if the person is, you've got a hit, and if the person isn't, well, then you say, you, you will be taking a trip soon in the future, and you'll remember this when you do. Okay, I'm getting behind. Uh, psychics use props, tarot cards, crystal balls, or just read a palm. Now, there's another kind of medium that claims to help police solve crimes. Here's a few of them. Uh, we have John Edward, Sylvia Brown, and Alison Dubois, which are three of the most famous currently. However, they use I don't want to call them fakes, I will say this. The techniques they use are indistinguishable from cold reading, which anybody can learn and practice. Okay, does that make it clear? And many psychics will claim to work with the police to solve crimes. We've, uh, we in the IIG have attempted to contact police departments to verify that, and we haven't found a single case of a psychic ever being invited in by the police to help solve a crime. Usually it's the family that requests that they work with the police. Oops, I'm going a little bit too far. Okay, moving on to hauntings. Uh, Carl Sagan perhaps said it best in his book, Demon Haunted World, uh, <laughs> about hauntings and ghosts. He says, people are haunted not places. And what he means by that is, if you go back to your childhood home where you grew up and your parents are dead and you're walking through the place, you will of course have this flood of memories coming back to you. Now, that's unique to you. Anybody else walking in that place is just an old empty house, right? So it's the person that is, it's the person in the place that experiences, experiences the haunting. Now, if it's an old home and it's creepy and it's dark and there's cobwebs, well then of course then you've got the spooky aspect and then maybe other people going in could experience some of the same stuff. But they wouldn't know that, you know, John and, and Mary lived there and what happened to them and that kind of stuff. They wouldn't have the background on the place so they wouldn't have the same feelings in, inside the, the uh, property. Uh, there, you can read about many haunted house investigations by colleagues here at TAM, such as Joe Nickel, Ben Radford. I don't think Tracy King is here this year, but she's done some stuff in the UK. I've been on some TV shows. We in the IIG have done two or three haunted houses in California. Uh, no site has ever been properly investigated and found that ghosts are the only explanation for a haunted house. What about the Amityville Horror? We're always asked that anytime we, we talk about there not being any good cases for uh, hauntings. Well, that was admitted to be a work of fiction. The author, being sued in a courtroom, uh, admitted that it was all made up, and that's public record. It was admitted to in a, in a trial, and that's available to anyone who wants to check. So just forget about the Amityville Horror. Ghost Hunter TV shows, shows are universally horrible. Uh, they have lots of fancy equipment. Never solved a single case. Uh, the best I've seen from them is when they leave a scene to say, yes, this place might be haunted. Uh, so if you're going to investigate, here's a couple of tips. Number one, turn on the lights. How many, how many investigations, how many serious investigations are done with lights off? Get some light on them you, so you can see what the heck you're doing for heaven's sake. Perimeter control, who's, who's entering and leaving? If there was a crime scene, the police, what's the first thing the police do is they set up a perimeter and they find out who comes and who goes. Because if you don't have control over that, anybody could be hoping you messing around with you. And always rule out the null hypothesis before accepting the supernatural hypothesis. Monsters, I'm gonna have to go through this very quickly. Uh, one of the leaders is uh, in cryptozoology, which is the study of legendary creatures which may or may not be real, is uh, Ivy Sanderson, which wrote a lot of books and magazine articles in the 50s and 60s. He was cited as the inspiration for the Patterson. Roger Patterson and Robert Gimlin, who made the classic Bigfoot film, which still today stands up as the, the best evidence for Bigfoot, which, that's a photo from the film there. It's either a Bigfoot or it's someone in a furry costume. You make up your own mind. 
Okay, I'm going to skip over Loch Ness. The, the famous photo was admitted to be a fake. That's the best evidence for Loch Ness and an admitted fake. Chupacabra, solved just recently. Turned out the person who described the first Chupacabra had seen the movie Species and was describing the character from that movie. And that was determined by Ben, Rad ben Radford only uh, within the last year or so. So that one we can move essentially to the solved stack. ESP, J.B. Ryan uh, started the, the whole field of ESP research and the Zener cards. However, the experiments were flawed. Uh, early researchers weren't prepared to be hoaxed or wouldn't, weren't prepared to be lied to. When you're doing an experiment with a rat in a maze, the rat doesn't lie to you. When you're talking to a human subject and something moves and you say, did you do that? And the person said, yeah, I did that. But many scientists aren't prepared to deal, for that, deal with that. So uh, a lot of the early work on that is very flawed, as Randy has pointed out in his book, Flynn Clam and others. Here's another Stanford Institute uh, work that was done in the 1970s with Yuri Geller, Pat Price, and Ingo Swan. Uh, and again, the rats were allowed to run the experiment, and the researchers were not being skeptical, and we allowed them to get away with a lot of stuff that uh, they were embarrassed by later. Uh, incidentally, in all the work by the military, the CIA, or everybody else, ESP and remote viewing is never shown to uh, solve anything. Uh, okay, I'm just going to have to skip the UFO movement because I'm out of time. It all started from a mistranslation of the word canale by the person looking at Mars. Uh, I will just quickly touch on Roswell. Oops, I want to pass that. Uh, the debris that came down in Roswell was from spy balloons. The U.S. was building balloons because we didn't trust the uh, Russia. We were in a, the height of the Cold War. It was right after World War II. We were building balloons. Now, people refer to these as weather balloons. These were not weather balloons. These were huge balloons. They were the size of the house. And so there was a lot of debris that came down. The cover story was terrible. And, of course, that immediately started uh, stories of government cover up, cover up. And that's where all subsequent UFO stuff has come from. And I'm going to skip over many of these authors and things because you can, you can look it up on the IIG website. There are several articles. Billy Meyer is one of the current proponents. Read about him on the IIG West website. And then also Dr. Stephen Greer in the same boat. If I had more time, I'd go into these, but I don't. So I just wanted to leave you with some of these references. These are, oops, these are things that everybody should have in their library. And I'm not going to read them, but I'll leave them up on the screen as I walk off. Uh, there's no time for questions, I'm sorry, but see me afterwards if you want more clarification or anything else, or go to the IIG West website for more information. Thank you. Hey. Flash card review of uh, debunking. Fantastic. And uh, so uh, I'll tell you just for a second with a joke that we always use in my class. When we talk about psychics, it was the, uh, uh, did you hear about the uh, midget psychic that escaped from prison? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah the headlight like what? Small, Small medium large. Oh. Yeah. Okay, let's move along. So uh, one aspect of critical thinking, obviously, is consumerism.